Wise cams are great. They're inexpensive. They are a relatively good device for the price and they have a great app and setup that helps you go ahead and configure them. But they're not perfect and they do come with some little quirks. So what I wanted to do today is talk to you about a couple of setups that I have kind of put together here with some specific settings with your wise cams that you can utilize to go with your kind of own personal preferences here. What I will do over the video is get more and more complex as to the setup, but we will start with an extremely simple setup for most people. So there's kind of three things or three pitfalls that I would say come with the wise cams that a lot of people struggle with. And there's a couple others that we'll talk as we go through the video, but in general, they can trigger a lot on motion and and uh, sound triggers here. They really can send you a lot of notifications and their sensitivity is a difficult thing to actually adjust and have work. But after that, the device has become very powerful and WISE has given us a lot of ways to manage this. So the first scenario I'm going to talk about is really for those of you who really want this camera to be there and to record and you don't wanna know about it. You really don't want any sort of notifications and that's the first thing we're going to do we're actually going to turn off notifications for this camera but leave on the motion and sound trigger set setting so that you just get a lot of recording so you're not worried about having a lot of cloud recordings and you're not worried about knowing about those cloud recordings you just want them to be there so inside the application i'm actually going to go into my garage cam and you see my poor dog sitting out there because she's just too loud when i'm recording here but in general what we're going to do is go into the settings which is top right here and what we're going to make sure is that we have the detects motion and the detects sound settings turned on. Those are the only two things that actually trigger your device to send to the cloud. So send a 12 second clip. So they record a 12 second clip every time and there is basically a cool down period that WISE has for those triggers so it will wait between those 12 second recordings. Now the other thing is if you don't want to know about this sending the push notifications is what you want to turn off so there will be no notifications the schedule is all day and you've enabled motion and sound detection. Now, those detection settings, as we go into there, you're gonna wanna leave those around 30 to 40 as a sensitivity. And what I'll tell you is you'll be capturing light changes in some cases, but to you, this doesn't matter because it's just a 12 second trigger that you wanna have, or a 12 second recording that you wanna have trigger all the time, just so that if anything ever happens, you can go and get those recordings. There's also the alarm settings within this screen here, within the settings of each camera. And I would say you probably just wanna utilize the smoke and CO alarm sounds. And after that, the advanced settings, really all you're going to want to make sure of is night vision is on auto. And we're not gonna talk about local storage yet, we'll get to that. The, do you want the timestamp watermark? Yeah, I would say you do. And do you want to record the time? Yes. Do you want it to sync to time? Yes. And after that, you're pretty much done with this camera. So we talked about those motion and sound, those, those detection settings actually triggering this camera to record or, or any of your cameras to record. Now, the first option that I'm going to add is somebody who wants a little more control, they want a little more recorded, and so what we're talking about actually is a local storage option. Now, the great thing with the Wise Cams is that they have a local storage option. You're going to want an SDXC card, so that's greater than 32 gigabytes inside, and it's a micro SD card. And you're going to want it class 10 or greater, so it's, it's going to need to be fairly high speed. Once you have all of those things, you're ready to basically install it in the camera, and then you can go back into the settings. And what I'll tell you right now is the motion and sound detection settings you don't have to change those at all. You could adjust your detection settings if you wanted to, but 
in general don't change those, they will still upload to the cloud. But where the difference starts to come in, and I will show you here again in the settings, is inside of advanced settings, you now have a local storage option. And so you can turn on the local recording to a micro SD card. And actually, I'm gonna to have to show you on my other camera here. This camera has a micro SD card that I've placed in it here. And so the adjustment is that you have a local recording to a micro SD card turned on, and then you actually have the record events only or a continuous recording that you can choose. Now, if you record events only, it will exactly align with those other settings that we talked about. So anytime it triggers, off of motion or sound, it will record an event. Now the nice thing with that setting is it will record a full minute. And if it continues to see in the next minute more sound or more motion, then it will just continuously record, basically create another clip for a minute and record it to the SD card. So you will capture a lot more time with that SD card added on here. And so you're gonna get more of the events you wanna see. But the SD card will eventually fill up. And uh, they also tell you to format the card with fat, uh, formatting, I just wanted to put that out there. But the SD card, when it gets full, it will just start erasing the other content that's on here. So you can see how you could turn on continuous recording immediately and have all of the, the motion going on and captured in your home. Installing the micro SD card just takes a second. One thing to always remember is the pins on SD cards face towards the electronics, basically. That's just a good thing to remember, but you really do have to push it in uh, quite far into the device and you will hear it click and then you will also hear this sound. So getting a little more complicated, what if you don't want it to record all the time? Or you want to kind of schedule this camera in terms of just a time of day. Well, that's very easy in terms of scheduling this device. You can do that in the event recording section where you can just set a recording. Now, the thing with this section is that you can only record a start and an end time or create a start and an end time to those recordings. And what this means to you is every day it's at the same time. And so on weekends, you will still have recordings going on. So what if you want to trigger a little more a little more smart or a little more in a smart way, well, we can now move to the If This Then That service. So with If This Then That, you can go ahead and create an applet that actually triggers based on your personal location. Now the problem with that is you're only creating one applet based off of one person's location. And I do have a workaround for that, but we'll talk about what that looks like and how in, in depth that solution is. But uh, the ability to trigger off of a location, so you just trigger an applet when you enter an area which is around your home, then you can turn off these cameras or you can turn off motion detection. You can also turn off notifications if you want it to continue recording, but you have this ability to turn on and off the cameras. Now, the real problem is you can't turn off sound detection as of yet. So you have that gap and that's where you might just wanna turn off the camera when you're in the area. And this goes to those of you with privacy concerns in general. You don't wanna be recorded on these devices. You can literally turn them off. And then when you exit that area, you can turn them on. Now, once you have all of this set up, well, there's only one more layer to go as far as I'm concerned, and that's ultimate control. And so what I'm going to tell you is all you're going to do is turn off your motion and your sound detection settings. So you're gonna turn both of those off. If you have a local SD card option, you're going to turn that to continuous recording. 
and you're done with that. You will have a local storage of a continuous recording. A 32 gigabyte should last two to three days at the very least. I've actually seen it last a little longer on HD uh, format. And so you will have that local recording. Now, what you will use to trigger cloud recordings is again, if this, then that. And you can structure that any way you'd like. You can go ahead and use motion detectors. You can use Nest uh, Protect devices. You can use really any other event that you have access to on if this, then that to trigger those 12 second cloud recordings. And that's one of the nice things about the if this and that and why service connection there is you can actually trigger cloud recording. So that is the ultimate control. That is somebody who wants to determine exactly when their data is going to the cloud. Now, if you're wondering how you apply this to having multiple people in your home and tracking those multiple people to make sure you only trigger recordings when nobody is home, well, you're going to need some other equipment and you're going to need access to our extended version of this video. Now that extended version will utilize Samsung SmartThings. That's a system I use here. And then you're able to actually just use one extra bulb to make this whole scenario happen very seamlessly for you as a person with SmartThings and WiseCams in your home. Now that extended version is available to my patrons on Patreon and you can go ahead and get signed up there. So if that's what you're looking for, that's available there in our extended version. You can follow the links now. Otherwise, you're all set up with your wise cams. You're good to go, and I wanna thank you for watching. I hope this has saved you time, saved you money, and gone ahead and automated a little piece of your life so you can spend it in a better way. So thanks again for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.